Good evening and welcome to Scrapbooking with a Twist. Um, this is <laughs> the start of something. I am going to do a um, challenge from Ginger's Corner. It's a Mother's Day challenge and we were given a recipe to do and that recipe we could use any of these things but we had to use five. Tags, ribbon, stamping, mixed media, an embellishment from a Ginger Corner swap, an altered photo, the word mom or mother, purple, enamel dots, distress paper, a handwritten title, sequins, excuse me, sequins, interactive element, fussy cutting. Those were the things that we could use. I'm going to use about seven of those, I think. I'm, I've got the ribbon. I'm going to do, I've already done a little mixed media. I'm going to add some more to that. I'm going to use mom or mother. And then there's actually some purple in some of these um, leaves and things. So I don't know if I'll get credit for that since I didn't use it. It's just in that. But anyway, we'll, I still have plenty. Distress paper. I have distressed all the way around this, uh, my paper. I'm going to use a handwritten title. And I've done a bunch of fussy cutting that I'm going to use. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put my photos across the top. I'm going to put three photos. This is Mother's Day of 2020. This is Mother's Day pandemic. And we had, we were at my son's house. My son-in-law had to work. So it's my daughter, my son, and my daughter-in-law. My son-in-law's a firefighter. So he had to work that day. But all six of my little grandsons. And, um... They cooked dinner. The boys cooked dinner for us, my son and the little guys, which is this picture, and it was awesome. And um, their place is just beautiful with all the trees and grass. So that's what I'm going to document today. And so I think I want to go ahead and get the pictures down. I've kind of scooted the fussy cutting off to the side. I just want to get these pictures on here somewhat straight. So I want to get a line across here to get these pictures on. I'm gonna make it just a little higher than what I want. Just give myself a, a place to glue those pictures down and then we'll get our, figure out where we need some more. Oh, you know, I think I should probably go ahead and do the rest of the mixed media because we're gonna put this across here so if I put that something like, let me get these on here and just see what we need. Put that a little below that. Let's, um, so about there is where the ribbon is going to come. So we know we need our mixed media to come up into there. And then I really think I want a little bit up these sides. This is just a little, I'm not, I don't even know for sure where I got this. Maybe Hobby Lobby when they're selling everything out. Maybe Dollar Tree even, I don't know. But um, so my, this picture is going to go right down here. So I need something to kind of come up to this, I'm going to have a cluster right over here. So I need something coming up there. I'm using shabby shutters and um, peeled paint to do this. And I'm just lightly doing the, whichever one, shabby shutters. And then I come back with just a little bit of the peeled paint just to add some, a little bit darker contrast. Okay. All right, that's got that. So that will take us up to that cluster. Then I think we need to maybe bring that, it'll be under that ribbon so I can do whatever I want to with it. 
let's do, it'll just barely show out the side right up here of that photo, but that's okay. Let's see if this one, yes, I think this one, because it's got the curve on it, will work better. Okay, just a little bit there to come out from under that photo. Okay, there's that one. Then we need to come up out of this one over here. And so there's going to be a cluster here. So I think we just need to come up this side out of it. most of which will be covered up, but at least it gives us that idea of continuity, continuity from the bottom of the page to the top of the page and kind of connecting some of the clusters and that type of thing. So I really think I need one that comes right across here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, so maybe this would be seven. Just coming out of this cluster. I wanna be really careful not to get anything. So I think just a little one right there. Okay. I think that is all we need for our mixed media. I did put this one up on foam tape. So let's get this where it'll be centered. Okay. Then to get these on there with it. Yes, that's what I really wanted. It's just some of that peeking out just barely. This one doesn't have quite enough. I think we need to get another leaf or two right out there. This is dangerous. <laughs> now it's got a little bit of the of the stem in it. I like that. Okay, that's better. Okay, I think we can go ahead and put the ribbon on there now. You know, it really needs that stem running right through there. Well, it's going to be covered with the embellishment, so it won't matter. Okay, so I think that's okay. Hopefully I'm not too far off camera. I am going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive on this ribbon. Usually that um, tape runner will hold it, but just in case, I'm going to use a little bit of this Nuvo because it glues anything. So I saw someone was asking what kind of liquid adhesive everyone used. I use the Nuvo Deluxe. I've used the Tombow Mono, but I really prefer the Nuvo. Get this where I can kind of run it straight. <coughs> Why I started wanting to cough as soon as I started videoing this. Okay, so that's got our ribbon. So we have mixed media, we have distressed paper, and we have ribbon so far. I think we can go ahead and put this down and then start building our clusters. I'm gonna, I've got to leave some space to put things in under this so I can't get too close to the edge. Calling that good. All right, now, to get to these clusters, I had them kind of laid on here, and um, it's red on red, but I've got a bunch of leaves, and really, I kind of liked that red on red. All of these reds, the reds for this and this and this, are all really, you know, most of the time you can't put reds together, but these are all really the same 
the same red, so it really worked out well. And then I've got these flowers that have some yellow with the red. Let's see, I had something kind of like that. And then I think I had these coming off over here. And then another set of leaves somewhere. Maybe something similar to that. And then I'm going to put that top one up on foam for sure. Or uh, the rest of our little cluster in around it. <clears throat> While I'm um, doing some of this, let me go ahead and do the twist for tonight. It's, it's short and it deals with Mother's Day, which I thought would be appropriate. Um, the scripture is from Proverbs 31, and it's verse 10. Proverbs 31 is referred to as the virtuous woman, and the whole chapter is about this virtuous woman, tells what she does. But this part of it, to me, is really special for Mother's Day, and it's verse 10, and it says, <clears throat> Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So what that says to me is that a good, a godly woman is priceless. You know, you can talk about things that are really priceless, but they're saying that this godly woman is actually priceless and that, that a virtuous woman is rare. Rubies were rare. And so this woman is rare and she's very, she's just priceless. So it goes on to say that her children will rise up, and I think it's like verse 28 and 29. It goes on to say that her children will rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. And you know, I can't imagine any woman that wouldn't want to be called blessed by her children or praised by her husband. So this, this virtuous woman that the Bible talks about is kind of that woman that we would all like to aspire to be. And so with God's help, we can. We can be that. We should spend every day growing in our relationship with God. That would be our, our goal. And then as that relationship with God grows, then our relationship with others would grow and prosper as well. So I thought that was a pretty good one for Mother's Day and for this layout. So here this is now, up on foam. So if I can get that on there, then I'll start fitting those other things around. I do think I need to bump the edges of this with just a little bit of, I've got a couple of places that are looking a little white. So I'm just going to touch those where they kind of looked. Fussy cutting this was kind of, it was sort of detailed and was a little bit hard to fussy cut. So, all right, let's get all these off, get this down, and then we can lay in the rest of our clusters. So we've added fussy cutting to it. So we're to four, I think it was, distress paper, ribbon, mixed media, and fussy cutting. So we've got four of the five things. And like I said, this actually has purple on it, so might even get to count that. I think that's everything. Okay, so we've got that one down. Now to figure out where we want these others to lay in under there. And then I may put some ends up on foam also of this. Kind of get this. I want that red to definitely be enclosed, you know, have all the green under it where it's on that red ribbon. So let's get these down there. 
since I like where they are. So what are y'all doing for Mother's Day? I think it's going to be neat. We do a lot with my um, daughter's in-laws. I actually, I was friends with her in-laws before, well, especially the mom, before my daughter and son-in-law ever even dated. My, um, I taught with her. I was a counselor at the, for just a little while at the junior high when I first became a counselor. And she was a teacher at the junior high. And uh, so we became friends, had known each other before that, just working in the same school district and everything. But we actually became friends, good friends, when I was teaching there and we worked together. And then uh, it wasn't until later, after my daughter graduated from college and her son had graduated from college, and then they both uh, took teaching jobs at the high school. And um, then my daughter was working on her counseling, and then my son-in-law went on to be a firefighter. He didn't teach, but I think a couple of years. But um, so anyway, we've been friends since before my son and daughter-in-law and their my son's kids my son's two little boys call her Mimi too and they have a pool and a really nice uh place we always have Easter there with the big Easter egg hunt and uh the boys always swim in their pool we're all welcome to go swim in their pool anytime and so it's just a really good 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 situation okay I think I like that pretty well and it's probably hard because it's all kind of dull to see on camera but I really kind of like that cluster okay now let's work on this this is going to be kind of the big cluster over here and I have this one that is kind of different from the others this one flower so I thought I might kind of try to tuck that in over here I don't want to cover up anybody I do have my little four of my daughter's sons their little faces are covered because they don't put them on Facebook or anything on social media of any kind so I think these are going to be like this hmm. Maybe, maybe this way. Mm, yes, I think I like that better. Let's see what else we've got. Maybe, I think it needs something coming down. Thought I had another one of these little yellow flowers somewhere. break that green up a little there. I need another one of those little yellow flower. There's one right there. Yay. Let's see if we can Where's my picker upper? I love these jewel picker upper things. Maybe maybe something like that. Just kind of gives something down here at the bottom. And that kind of gets that yellow back down into this cluster also. I don't normally fussy cut this much. Oh, I was going to show you. This is not finished cutting out. Let me show you something. One of the things on fussy cutting, you know when you're fussy cutting like little bitty places like this, and you get through and you feel like it looks like it's curled up? If you can cut from the underneath side, get your hole in there, and get in there and then cut from the underneath side instead of the top side. See how I'm coming in from the underneath side? It doesn't curl up and look like that. Oh, there goes my dog. It's dark. She thinks she needs to come in. I'm keeping my daughter a dog for my daughter. And so I've been leaving my Doberman out. It's hers is a Doberman also. And leaving her out with him in the daytime to play and keep him company. 
and she's used to being in the house more. And so she, she loves it because she loves to play with him. They play like crazy, but start getting dark and she's ready to come in. Get these off. I think that's going to work. And she's spoiled rotten. So, haven't put up a video in over a week, and I apologize, but I just, um, I tell you, life, I get so busy. I do an, um, a Bible study every week. I teach an adult Bible study class at our church. And so I do a Bible study every week and I put it online. They can use it as a study. I mean, I mean, I have people in Europe that, and people all over the United States that do it. So it's not like it's just, I started out with this being pandemic. This is an appropriate story, I guess. Um, I started out just doing it because our church was, um, you know, everybody's church was kind of shut down during pandemic. And all we had were online sermons and things like that. And so I started doing our Bible study, our lesson for the adults online, and we just posted it along with the sermons. And then when we started back to church and we could attend again, I just one week when I, because I mean, I just kind of figured everybody was like, okay, we're going back to church. You can stop doing this now. I didn't, and I mean, I had more followers than, I, I knew I had more followers than just probably from our church, but I still thought, eh, you know, people just be okay. So I just ask, you know, if anybody wants me to keep it going, I will, but you know, we're, everybody's starting back to church and if you're if you're done with it, well then I'm not going to keep putting it on there. Well, I got responses from a group in Missouri, um, a college group that was using it as their Bible study, and then I got a response from um, a couple in Europe, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't know because you don't know who's you don't know who who's watching it. And uh, or who even who subscribed. I mean, it may tell you their name, like when they first subscribe or something, but it doesn't tell you where they're from. You don't have any information. And so, and this is on, I, I started on YouTube and then YouTube just got to where it was almost impossible to load it. It just wouldn't upload. I was, I was really struggling. And so I went to Rumble and uh, now I do it on Rumble and YouTube kind of got everything straightened out with YouTube, but uh, it was just almost impossible to do anything with YouTube there for a while. I was really struggling with YouTube, but anyway, got it going again, and um, and so I've, I've just kept it going. So it's been going now for over three years, and if you, I would love for any of you to, uh, to follow me, just to subscribe, and um, I do it every week. And I follow the Lifeway materials, which is um, Baptist, basically, materials, but it's just straight from the Bible. And um, we, we're we studying John right now. We I believe we go to Jeremiah next. And uh, it's it's really been a, a blessing to me to do it. And then, of course, I teach it to my Sunday school class, to my Bible study class on, on uh, Sunday mornings. But... I would love for you to go just on YouTube, or if you do Rumble, but on YouTube, it's just Weston Bible Study, and I'd love to have you join us. So, there is that. Okay, it's down flat there, and then comes up under those leaves. Now, we have one more little thing to do over here. Let's see what we can do with what I've got. I had a little butterfly over here too. I don't want to forget to put that down. And I've got a little butterfly maybe to put somewhere over here. There were only two of those butterflies on that whole sheet. I think I need this down further, maybe put that up there. I want something down here like that other side too. This is 
look like out there. Maybe that. Maybe. So I think I'm going to write Mother's Day 2020 right there. Buy it with, <laughs> I know I'm taking a risk, but I think I'm going to write it with in hand, by just my hand. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to do. Make some more phone tape. this last cluster done write that see if we have anything else that we can do on our recipe and we'll have this one in the books I hope you have a great Mother's Day um, you know, sometimes we have some struggles with our mothers, but, you know, there are mothers who never mothered that are, that never gave birth, that are wonderful mothers. We have, like, some people in our church that have adopted. Well, of course, we have one that's adopted, and we're just so blessed and so thankful that we had the opportunity to adopt him, and, um, we have step parents and all kinds of things that you know parenting isn't just giving birth and and giving them a name or it's so much more than that and teaching them and raising them and loving them and being there with them through all the things they go through my son is 45 and my daughter is 44 and it's been, it's been the joy of my heart being their mother. So I know that most everyone feels that way. Good kids that didn't ever get in trouble and that kind of stuff. I know I'm just so blessed, but you know, not everybody goes through unscathed, but you come through on the other side and just, you just have to keep loving them. Okay, if I could get this off, I think we're getting close to being through. That one little piece does not want to come off. Okay, we got one more. I think that's going to go on a tiny, tiny little piece of foam. And then our butterflies, I think, other than writing, that may be it. Get these, I'm gonna just put a dot of glue down their little middles. Okay, I think that's about it. We're gonna look at our recipe and see if there's anything else that we can do, or if I've forgotten anything. Okay, we did the ribbon. We did the mixed media. Uh, whatever about the purple. The distress paper. I'm fixing to do the word mother. I did a lot of fussy cutting, and I'm gonna do a handwritten title. So I think that's it. Okay, wish me well, because I don't normally just strike out and start writing. Oh, uh, but here we go. Let me check my pen before I... Here we go. Well, it isn't beautiful, but it's handwritten. 
Okay, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a blessed day. Here is a little bit of a close-up if you want to see it a little better. I don't know. I can't see what you're seeing, so hopefully. So those clusters worked out, I think, pretty well to be um, fussy cut. And with the foam, I think they ended up looking pretty good. So anyway, there we are. We got about seven, I think, or so of the recipe on our layout and used up a piece of paper that I would have never used. So have a blessed day. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for dropping by my channel. Give me a thumbs up and if you would please and encourage others to join our channel. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe. I'm going to put up a couple more videos, I think, either today or tomorrow and try to get a couple more embellishments done. But thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Happy Mother's Day.